Hey there everybody, in this video we are going to talk about Facebook ads versus Google ads. Which one should you use for your business and which one's going to be more effective for you as a small business. This is going to be a really helpful video if you've been considering going more on Facebook ads or Instagram or if you're thinking, you know what, maybe I should test out Google. This is going to be very helpful for you. So let's get into today's video. My name is Brandon Brashears. I make daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, be sure to subscribe hit that bell notification. And if you have any questions or need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out by commenting on any of the videos. So let's talk about Facebook versus Google. Facebook is tremendously powerful. It's been the biggest, I think, ad platform in general for most digital marketers and small businesses. In the past, if you were running ads, you were obviously going to be running ads on Facebook. I think the reason why Facebook ads were so popular in the past is that they were really, really undervalued and there wasn't as much competition. So it was far easier two, three, four years ago to get amazing return on investment. It's not to say that you can't get return on investment still. It's actually an amazing platform. The targeting details are amazing. The ad types are wonderful and there's so much reach that you can get. Your customers and your clients are absolutely on either Facebook or Instagram. You can say that almost, unless your, your clients are like 95 year olds, even then you're probably gonna have most of them on Facebook or Instagram. But Facebook and Instagram, there are some limitations to that. And if you've been doing digital marketing for the past say year or so, you've probably been running into a ton of volatility with the platform. The reason for this is that the platform is getting into maturity. It's going through growing pains right now. And this happens to every single ad platform. Back, I'd say 10, 12 years ago, Google went through the same thing where Google was highly undervalued. People were jumping in there and as they go, they make up the rules. It's like the wild west. And so as a result, people would get what they called Google slapped. That was the equivalent of getting your ad account banned. So when you're thinking about Google or Facebook, I think there's some really, really important things that you need to consider. I think the first thing that you need to do is, are you a business or a brand that is going to benefit from intention-based searches? Now there's definitely intention-based searches for every single industry out there, right? So if you have, let's say you're a dog groomer, if people are searching for dog groomer near me, you should be advertising on those keywords. But if you're, let's say a loan officer, if somebody searches for loan prices or loan interest rates, it's going to be a very, very expensive cost per click. And that's not even a conversion. If you have a 10% conversion rate and your cost per click is 50 to $75, that's going to be 500 to $750 per conversion. If you're doing a great job in converting cold traffic at 10%. So you can see where it becomes based on your specific industry, on what your goals are and how you're able to compete in the industry that you're in. I know that this isn't a cut and dry answer, but most businesses would benefit from having intent-based um, searches and showing up for intent-based searches. And this should hopefully make a lot of sense. So Facebook is not a platform where people are actively searching for products and services. It's more of a discovery-based platform. People are engaging with content. So if you wanna be on Facebook, you need to have content. You need to have a content strategy and you need to engage your clients and customers with content. That content is what's going to segment your audience and allow you to do retargeting and show people offers that are relevant to what they're actually looking for. So if you're able to make content, every single business should be making content in 2019 and beyond. And this is why it's so important is because platforms like Instagram and Facebook rely on content for you as a brand or a business to grow. So I know that it takes time and sometimes content doesn't necessarily have an immediate ROI, but you need to be basically communicating at scale through content on Facebook and Instagram. Now I know we were talking about ads and where you should be running ads. If you don't have time or you don't have the inclination to create content, then running search-based ads for specific key phrases are gonna be important. Now there's three kinds of key phrases that people typically use. We have branded search, we have informational search, and we have transactional searches. And within each of those categories, there are tons of opportunity for you as a brand or a business to reach customers. So let's talk really quick. We'll go over this very, very quickly. There's so much more in depth that you can get with this topic, and I'll absolutely make a video about this topic in particular. But the three types of searches, so branded search. 
if somebody's, for example, going on American Airlines and they want to look up times for flights, they will search for American Airlines flight times. That's like a branded search. So if somebody is searching for a specific brand, that is an opportunity. If you had somebody that was searching for a specific part to a specific brand of vacuum cleaner, that's also a branded search. If people are searching for your brand or business, that's a branded search. You wanna make sure that you're showing up at least at the top of organic. And then if you have competitors who are bidding on your keywords, you might wanna consider also um, paying for ads to also show up because ads show up at the very top and then the organic is typically below maps, especially if it is a local business. So you're gonna to wanna to do some research and see are people searching for your brand or your business? And if so, are your competitors bidding for your keyword? Because if they are, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're showing up. And you know, I'll tell you a little story here really quickly. Um, I work with veterinary practices a lot and a lot of times competitors will bid for broad match search terms and typically the word veterinary hospital is in the name of a veterinary hospital and so as a result their competitors are showing up if the competitor's name are similar they'll oftentimes get traffic who it's just confusion traffic and then the people will show up at the practice and say hey i booked an appointment with you and they have no record of it because they actually booked an appointment with their competitors but they still came to their practice so it's just an interesting thing to note it's possible and you might say well i don't want to have to bid on my own name it's, unfortunately it's the it's the name of the game now you want to be getting those customers who are actively looking for you so you just want to make sure that you're on top of that that you're checking it regularly so the other one is informational searches. Now there's opportunity here because we can segment different audiences. These people aren't necessarily ready to buy right away, but it's definitely potential for a customer. So for example, if somebody is searching for, you know, what are the best water heater brands? If they're searching and doing research on, you know, should I buy a tankless water heater versus a tank water heater? What are the pros and cons and cost differences? If you're a local plumber and you have a piece of content that drives people to that page and the people are in your area searching for it, they're not ready to buy right now, but they're searching for something. And if you provide information and you give them content and help them to get into your funnel, there may be an opportunity down the road to actually convert these people into traffic them to actual customers. So that's an informational type search. And the last type is a transactional type search. So it's things people are actually searching to make a purchase decision. So for example, if somebody is searching for del uh, flower delivery on Mother's Day, right? Flowers that deliver on Mother's Day. Somebody's actively looking for a solution that actually delivers flowers on Mother's Day. They're ready to buy and they want a specific end goal in mind. Those are the lowest hanging fruit typically if you want to be doing ads that drive people directly to an action. You don't have to give away things necessarily unless it's super competitive and it's typically people are ready to buy, they're actively looking to buy. So if I have a client who has a limited budget, I'll typically take a look at the ad landscape, do some competitive analysis, see what the competitors are bidding on, see what is open, and I'll focus on those transactional keywords. I'll also use Facebook for branding, engaging current clients, remarketing lists, all of the demographic things that, that we do. And depending on your brand or your business, you're gonna know, you know, is my business more of a transactional type business or is it a relationship business where we have repeat customers and you want to use both platforms in my opinion to your benefit i think that you should absolutely be creating content every single day um, for your brand or your business and you should also be running ads for both branding awareness so to your current clients so that they're continuing to stay in touch with your brand and you're there repeatedly but you should also actively be searching out new clients and new customers now, last thing that we'll talk about here is if you're on Facebook and you're trying to attract new customers, again, people aren't actively looking for clients and customers on Facebook, for businesses to work with, I mean. So what do you need to do to get people to come into your business? I think it's actually pretty simple. You have to give them an offer that they can't refuse. You need to help them take the first step. Now, the way that I like to, to frame this, because a lot of businesses don't like to give away things for free, and I totally get it. But if you want to get new clients coming in the door, you have to get them to come in somehow. They have to have a reason to come in. They're not just gonna show up because you were there. This doesn't happen. They're not on Facebook looking for a plumber or a veterinarian or an electrician, whatever it is that you do. They're not looking for you. So if you say, hey, we have a free entry level offer so that we can prove to you how good of a business that we are. Let us earn your business for life. Come one time and we'll keep you for life. 
If you say something like that, people like rooting for underdogs. They like justifying a free thing with some logic behind it. And that way they won't necessarily expect a discount every single time. So I hope that this was helpful. Google and Facebook are amazing tools. They are wonderful for small businesses. And so if you're considering getting into either Facebook or Google and you're not sure what to do, please be sure to head on over to maverickdigitalmarketing.com. You can request a 30-minute marketing idea session with me. Happy to help, happy to give ideas. And if you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to comment below. I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day, everyone.